Evernote has just released new plan structures and new pricing. I'm going to give you my thoughts and my recommendations today. Hi, this is Frank Buck, and this is the place to be if you want to get organized and make it look easy. Let's talk first about the free plan. The new structure still offers a free plan, and it limits you to 50 notes, one notebook, 20 tags, one device. No change there. Think of it as a, a notepad for the information that's essential to you that you want to have from everywhere. With only 50 notes, they need to be pretty fluid. You might use it to keep up with, with things that you're working on now, and when those things are no longer of need to you, you delete those notes and you remember to empty the trash because whatever's in, in the trash counts against those 50 notes. I also see the free plan as something that would be valuable to someone who's not an Evernote user, but they're the caregiver for someone who is. You see, that, that other person, that regular Evernote user, can share notebooks with you. The notes in those notebooks do not count against your 50 limit. So if you have an elderly parent who's an Evernote user, they share notebooks with you that give you all of their medical information, uh, information about their doctors, financial information, uh, emergency information, and you're going to have all of that right there on your phone. Let me give you another scenario. Uh, you have a son or daughter in college, and they use Evernote extensively. You do not. But they share certain notebooks with you so that you see the information about things like their student loan, the load that they're taking this particular semester, uh, information about their apartment, all of those kind of things. Or another scenario, you're the heavy Evernote user, your son or daughter is not, but you want them to have certain information in case of emergency. You have it in your Evernote account, you share the appropriate notebooks, and all you have to do is just keep that information up to date and they have the latest and greatest information there on their phone, their one device. All right, so now let's move on to the other two plans. Here's where the difference uh, happens. We have one called the starter plan and one called the advanced plan. Now, Evernote used to have personal and professional that were priced at $130 and $170 per year respectively. Now, there were plenty of people that they liked, they liked Evernote, they wanted to use Evernote, but the $130 price tag was a little too much. They wanted a cheaper plan, even if it offered less. So, the starter plan actually provides a price decrease, but it also is a substantial limit on the number of notes, notebooks, and devices. The starter plan is $100 a year. It would go into effect when your Evernote subscription comes up for renewal. Now, I'm going to give you all of the information about everything that's included. All of that's going to be in the body of the blog post. But the starter plan allows for a thousand notes. Now, that may seem like a great deal. And for you, that may be plenty. I think I had about 2,000 notes after just a couple of years with Evernote. So it's something that can fill up in a hurry. So here's my suggestion if you want to make the starter plan work. Think in terms of fewer notes, longer notes. Use the collapsible headers that Evernote gives you as a way to organize more information within a single note. For example, Let's say you're planning a trip and you might create a notebook for that trip. Within that notebook, you might have one notebook that's related to all the flight information one way or another. Uh, another note that is related to the rental car information. Another for hotel information. Another for dining ideas. Another for other sightseeing ideas. Well, if you're using the starter plan, you might want to just create one note for that trip. Title it with the name of where you're going and then use collapsible headers for 
the flight information, the rental car, the hotel, so forth and so on, so that everything is contained in that one note, and you just simply collapse the headers and expand to see what you want to see at any given time. And that even works very well on your phone. Now, if you wanted to have the notebook for the trip, then I would suggest when that trip is over, go back into that notebook and consolidate. Get rid of totally what is no longer going to be of lasting value. Uh, merge the notes in that notebook into a single note. Move it over into, say, one notebook that's just trips, that is a note for every trip you've ever taken. And then get rid of this notebook for this trip that you just took. So you've turned an entire notebook into one note with everything about this trip that's gone by, and you've saved yourself a notebook because you're limited to 20. And that's the next thing to talk about. You only have 20 notebooks to work with. So be frugal. I think you're going to wind up thinking about those 20 notebooks as big areas of your life. For example, a notebook about, uh, it may be called home, and it's everything about that home, whether it's the mortgage, whether it's lawn care, what you, everything about your home in that one notebook. Pro probably a notebook with for health. If you have children, probably a notebook related to each child you have and everything about that child is in that notebook. And then use tags to further subdivide. So Evernote um, used to limit us to 20, 250 notebooks. That, that was the limit for any plan. And many people saw that is rather limiting. They felt like they got to 250 notebooks pretty quickly. And so for that reason, many people used tags as an important organizational structure because you, you had, um, I forget how many tags you had, but it was an astronomical number. With a limit of 20 notebooks, you may want to look at tags as your organizing structure. Uh, use the 20 notebooks as the big areas of your life and the tags to subdivide that. From there, use the naming configuration of the notes to further divide the subject matter. Let me give you an example. I have a notebook called Home, and I have a tag called home dash Direct TV. Direct TV is the provider for my, you know, my, my TV. And underneath that tag, I, I've got 22 notes that are tagged home dash Direct TV. So what are those 22 notes? Well, one is a chronological listing of contacts uh, that I've had with Direct TV, phone calls back and forth. Um, other notes are related to specific technical issues that I've had. So if, if I have a problem and I fix the problem, I want to document what I did so that the next time it happens, all I got to do is go to my notes. Um, I have notes related to the various channels that I can access and other promotions that I've been given. So for me, 22 notes all related to Direct TV justifies having a tag for it. But if I was limited to 100 tags total, that might be another story. So I might have a notebook for home, because our house is a pretty major part of our lives, and have a tag called subscriptions that I'm going to apply to DirecTV, my internet service provider, uh, our pest control, all of the things where we have regular subscriptions that we pay. And then as I start to name notes, if it's related to DirecTV, start the title of the note with DirecTV. So I might have a note called Direct TV communication, direct TV troubleshooting, direct TV billing. So if you have a personal plan and want to go with the starter plan when your subscription renews, you'll probably want to do some reorganization to meet these new limits.
So if you have more than 20 notebooks or if you have more than a thousand notes, you'll still be able to access them, but you won't be able to create more notebooks and you won't be able to com to, com to compose more notes until you get under that limit. So clean up your system, review your notes and delete the junk. Look for notes that you can merge. Look at the tags and the notebooks that are maybe only used for a few notebooks or a few notes rather and do some consolidation. And my understanding is that you're going to have access to all of the features that the top tier plan has, including the AI features. You're just simply limited to the number of notes, notebooks, tags, and devices. You're limited to three devices. So I'd look at that as your home computer, your work computer, and your phone. Those would be my three devices. But it really simply boils down to how important your digital notes are to you. Price tag of $100 a year boils down to $8 and a quarter a month. That's a burger, fries, and drink, maybe once a month. Now, let's talk about the top tier. It's called the Advanced Plan, and it comes with a price tag of $250. Now, those of us who have used Evernote for a long time remember the days 10 years ago when the price tag for that top tier was $50 a year. On the other hand, there's a great deal more in Evernote now than there was 10 years ago. And the capability of what our digital notes can do for us and how they interface with the notes from online meetings and, gosh, AI capabilities, it's so different now. So when you look at that $250 a year, so we're talking $21 a month, Okay, that's a decent meal for one person once a month. So is it worth it to you? I don't know. For me, the answer is yes, but that's the question. And if you went somewhere else, how much would you pay there? That's something to research also. And what is it worth in terms of the time and effort to move from one platform to another? What's your time worth? How many hours would it take you to get up and going somewhere else and hope that you like the move that you made once you've made it? So here's your call to action. When your subscription comes up for renewal, you have a decision to make. Now, there are people who have left Evernote and they say they're happy. There are others who have left and they've come back. Some people love Notion. Others say that they've left Notion for Obsidian and they're happy. And still others say that Obsidian's too complex and they want something simpler. And others have gone to a host of other note-taking apps somewhere else. So one of the big questions is, how long is something going to be around? And what kind of support system is there? When you run into trouble, who can you ask? You might want to think about that on the front end. So you might just decide you're going to ante up with the higher subscription and the unlimited notes, notebooks, tags, and devices, and who knows how much better Evernote's going to be a, a year down the road. And when you're with your money, let's face it, there goes your attention as well. When you shell out your money for something, you're going to make sure that you get your money's worth. So if you decide to pay $250 that next time your subscription comes up, you might just decide that this is going to be the year you really get serious about Evernote. You're going to really use Evernote. And if you want to learn how to use it better, there are people out there that are going to help you. Take me, for example, on my YouTube channel, I have a whole playlist devoted to Evernote. You'll see a link to that in the body of the blog post. Go over there, binge on those, very practical, and they're aimed at the beginning to intermediate level. Uh, I also have an ebook for a very nominal value. Uh, I'm going to give you the link to that in the body of the blog post. I'm updating that. In fact, right now it's time for another update. And what I've been doing to this point, anybody who's bought the ebook, when I update it, I automatically just email them a copy of the updated one 
free of charge. And I hope to continue uh, to be able to do that. So in the body of the blog post, you're going to see a link to that Evernote ebook. It starts you at the beginning, brings you up to what is recent. Because see, one of the things is there's been so much written about Evernote in the past, but it has changed so much in just the last several years. Actually, just the last year and in a couple of months, we're going to be looking probably, I, I don't know the timetable, but we know that Evernote 11 is coming. And if you really want to up your game, I do have room for a few additional coaching clients. We can work on Evernote. We can also hook you up with a great digital task manager and a strategy to make it your one-stop shop for everything you have to do. Imagine having one place for everything you have to do, all the actions in your life, and one place, Evernote, for the information in your life with the two being able to work hand in hand. And then imagine being able to fine tune your digital calendar and really make use of a good auto scheduler. It's a huge time saver. And then there's everything AI. That's one area that's been a major focus for me lately. It has certainly helped my productivity. I'd love to help you with it as well. You're going to see information on how to get started in the body of the blog post. So please come over, take a look at that post, take some action. Thanks for stopping by today. This has been Frank Buck helping you get organized and make it look easy.